It is not your imagination. You're not going crazy. Life really is getting harder. And you might notice that at the end of your day, when you're looking back, you have a hard time really figuring out what you did. You know, if you sleep six and a half hours a night, which is not enough, but that's average, you have 17 and a half hours of waking time per day. But I'm betting that you find it hard to identify that you had 17 and a half hours worth of activities in your day. It feels like you're losing time. It feels like things are just getting away from you. And you might feel powerless, like you're not in control of your own life. There are many reasons for this. And unfortunately, some of them I cannot help you with. Some of them are just part of how the world is going. But there is one thing that I can help you with quite a bit. And it can change a lot about what's happening inside and outside for you. Welcome back to the Psychology of Depression and Anxiety. I'm your host, Dr. Scott. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in moderate to severe depression and anxiety, as well as associated conditions. I make content for people who aren't really being served by a lot of what's out there on social media. Much of the content that I see seems to be geared towards lighter struggles, almost like cutesy versions of mental health challenges. I don't see a lot of people making content for the people who are really down in it. People who the world has maybe given up on a little bit, or people who have given up on themselves. Those are the people I feel passionate about working with because I've been that person. I've been that person for quite a long time. I know what it's like. I know how lonely it is. I know how hopeless it feels. And I want you to see that there are ways out. What we're going to talk about today is controlling your inner ecosystem so that every day is not quite so draining and so exhausting, so that your life does not feel like an endless battle. There's a couple terms I have to define before we can get into the practical elements of this episode. I need you to understand what willpower is. And, and you might think, I already know what willpower is. I already understand willpower. Most people don't. I mean, I, I don't know who you are specifically, but most people don't understand how willpower works. Willpower is what we use to engage in activities that are not our preferred activity from the available options at any given time. I need you to understand that willpower is finite. You don't have unlimited willpower. And so no matter how motivated you are, how strong you are physically or mentally, at some point, if you fight too many battles in a day, your willpower runs out. And when your willpower runs out, you enter what I call NPC mode. Now, really quick, if you're not familiar with uh, the term NPC, it's a gaming term. It stands for non-player character. So when you play a video game, uh, a lot of times some, if not all of the other characters in that game are not actually controlled by other people. They're controlled by the game itself. And so they're not human and they don't have the ability to respond like a human does. They just sort of respond in these pre-programmed, predictable ways. They can't really think or reason, and they're just driven by this coding inside of them. When we are out of willpower for the day, when we are exhausted and depleted from all the battles we have been fighting, we enter a similar mode where we can't really make any more decisions or inhibit behavioral impulses. Often the last few hours of our day, and that may be more for some of you right now, and that's okay. We just sort of enter into this path of least resistance mode where all we really feel capable of doing is maybe like watching TV, gaming, scrolling social media on your phone, anything that involves more willpower, more effort, more thinking than that. We just we don't have anything left by the end of the day. So that's willpower. We're going to return to that in a little bit. But the other thing I want you to understand is your inner ecosystem. This might sound a little cheesy, but bear with me. There basically is an entire world living inside of you. So if you were to really consider all of your physical processes, all of your thoughts, all of your feelings, all your memories, and how they're all constantly interacting with and reacting to one another, it, it's, it's its own world. It's like a galaxy inside of you. It, it would absolutely floor you to actually see it all. Like if you could really look inside your body while it's functioning or see a monitor of every possible function or process inside of you displayed on like an IMAX screen, you, you would not even believe how much is happening inside of you. One thing that is happening near constantly is a process called behavioral inhibition. You are drawn 
more towards certain activities than you are towards other activities. And it, everybody's a little bit different in this regard, right? And so what you are most drawn to, what you find most rewarding or most stimulating may be different than what I find most rewarding or most stimulating. These really, really high stimulation activities are the things we tend to revert to when we hit that NPC mode, when we have no willpower left, because they're things that require almost no effort and they have no purpose other than to produce acute momentary reward. And so anytime you are attempting to do something other than the highest reward activity available to you, you are using willpower to do that thing. For example, right now, I am using a little bit of willpower to make this video for you. Not a lot because I enjoy doing this, but it is a little bit less stimulating in the moment to just speak into a webcam than it would be to like go play a video game, for example. So if you imagine a 10 point scale of the stimulation of the various activities that are available to you, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, chances are the really, really high stimulation activities, the things that you find yourself just drawn to, maybe even subconsciously, you may or, may, you may, or may not actually be thinking about doing these things all the time. But when you have downtime, when you have in between time, when you're not consciously choosing what to do with your time, what are the things that you find that you keep going back to over and over and over again? Those are going to be like your eights, your nines and your tens on this scale. And what you probably notice is that they are mostly activities that have no purpose other than to produce an acute feeling of excitement or engagement or pleasure. They don't really do anything beyond that. A lot of the activities that do produce long-term benefit in your life. So things like going to work, going to school, growing your social network, taking care of your mind, taking care of your body, taking care of your home, doing your chores, working out, reading, all this stuff, right? You might find that a lot of that stuff sits more in the middle. Some of it may even be very low on your reward scale. I know a lot of people would say like doing dishes or doing laundry. For many people, that might be like a two. It's a very under stimulating activity when you're engaging in it, even though you know it produces long term benefit. And so anytime you're trying to do something that is lower on your scale, than the highest option that is available to you, you are using willpower to do that thing. The amount of willpower that you have to use to do that thing depends on how wide the gap is between the highest stimulation activity available to you and the one you're trying to make yourself do. The wider the gap, the more willpower it requires. So for example, let's say before I hopped on this uh, Zoom session to record this video, let's say I was gaming, playing a video game. Gaming is really, really high stimulation for me. My brain really responds to video games. They're probably a 10 for me on stimulation. This is about an eight. So I, I enjoy doing this. I actually like doing this quite a bit, but it's less stimulating than a video game because in the, in the moment when I'm recording this video, there's no feedback. When I get to see your guys' comments and stuff and likes, that's a 10. But as I'm recording this right now, I'm not getting any feedback from doing it. It's just me shouting into the void, basically. So doing this is about an eight for me. So at this very moment, I am using a relatively small amount of willpower to record this video for you instead of playing a video game. If I was trying to get myself to go fold laundry while I was playing a video game, laundry is like a four for me. So that's going to take a lot more willpower for me to get up and do that thing, right? So keep that in mind. The, hot, the wider the gap, the more willpower you have to use to make yourself engage in the behavior. And remember, willpower is finite. You don't have an unlimited amount. And once you're done for the day, you're done for the day. Okay. Now, the trick to this is it only requires willpower to hold yourself back from doing something that is actually an option right now. Realistically, like if I said, what is my 10 right now? Like anything in the world? I don't, I don't know, maybe a fishing trip to Alaska with my dad or something like that, right? Like, like I can envision a lot of amazing experiences I could be having right now, but I can't feasibly just go out and do them on a whim. And so I don't have to spend willpower to stop myself from doing something that I can't actually do right now anyway. Stuff like that might be in the back of your mind from time to time, but you don't actually have to expend willpower to not do them because you couldn't do them right now, even if you wanted to. 
Here's where it gets tricky, though. In the last 10 or 15 years, some very, very high stimulation activities have entered our world in a chronic sense, meaning for most of us, things are available 24-7 that previously were only available during certain parts of our day. And you've probably figured out, I am talking about this. I'm talking about smartphones. Smartphones have high stimulation activities available on them every second of every day. You basically have the whole world at your fingertips. I mean, I remember when I was in third grade, we we had this uh, school activity where we were supposed to like design our dream home. And I talked about, um, so this was, this would be the Super Nintendo days. I talked about like this, basically this gaming room that had every Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis game ever made on it. And I thought, you know, that's insane. That's, that's like, that'll never happen. That's so lofty. It's literally in my hand right now. Like you can do, you can watch every, every movie ever made pretty much, listen to any song ever written, read any book ever written. The whole world is at your fingertips or in your purse or in your pocket or wherever. So pretty much every second of every day that you are not on your phone, you are probably spending some amount of willpower to make yourself do literally anything else. Because the stimulation value in a smartphone is, I, I don't even know how to calculate it. It's insane. So you are fighting this willpower battle every second of every day. Going to work, engaging with people, taking care of your daily tasks. All of these are less stimulating than the smartphone. And it's no wonder we're so exhausted all the time. It's no wonder it's such a struggle to make it through a day because you're fighting constantly. Your brain wants to go over here and nonstop. You're like tugging at this leash like, no, let's try to go over here. No, let's try to go over here endlessly. It's so exhausting. It's so draining. There is only one way I know that we can get out of this endless loop of having to use willpower for every single thing that we do. And that is to limit yourself on this device. Now there's two ways you can do that. One is you can delete apps that you know are trouble for you. I know that might be a lot, but I want you to really think about the pros and cons of this. I hit a point in my life a few years ago where I realized under no circumstances can I have League of Legends on my phone. League of Legends mobile would ruin my life if I kept it on there because it is more stimulating to my brain than literally anything else in the entire world. And that's embarrassing to admit, but it's true. I don't know what your League of Legends is. And by the way, just a quick little aside, like your thing may not be the phone right? For a lot of people, it is going to be the phone, but we're drawn to all sorts of different things. Your, your phone might be alcohol, right? It might be a substance. It might be shopping. It, it, it could be something else, but if there's something that's always drawing you in, something that you always want to be doing, everything else that you do in your day gets measured against that thing. And it's going to make your entire life feel like a disappointment because you're never truly doing the thing that you really want to be doing. And the stimulation value of an activity, by the way, has nothing to do with morality. This has nothing to do with your values or the way you see the world. I don't actually think League of Legends is the most important thing in the world. But there is a part of my brain that finds it more engaging than anything else that I do. And so as long as it is an option, it's the thing I'm going to wish that I was doing and everything else is going to fall short. Deleting things from your phone or removing things from your life that nothing else can quite compare to that constantly drain you to inhibit your desire to engage in them can actually make such a difference in your mood and your energy level. The second thing you can think about doing, if that's a little bit too much or if it's just not feasible, is to set some limits, set some parameters for yourself. I only have certain times of day where I will allow myself to be on my phone. I have set those limits and I follow those limits. And during those times of day, yeah, if technically, physically, it's still an option. And I know that, but I will at least put it in a different room. I'll put it on the charger. I'll, I'll get it kind of out of sight, out of mind, so to speak. When that option is not available to me, 
everything else in my life suddenly gets more stimulating because it's not being compared to something to which it cannot compare. My relationships get more stimulating. Taking care of my home gets more stimulating. Going for a walk gets more stimulating because those actually can be incredibly enjoyable things when taken of their own accord, basically. Taking care of yourself doesn't have to feel like a burden. It doesn't have to feel miserable. It only feels that way because we are constantly being surrounded by all these more acutely enjoyable things. And it is this is uncharted territory. This is new stuff. We haven't had to deal with things like smartphones for very long. We're still figuring out how this affects our brains and our functioning. And so right now, probably, unless you're a very young person, the only person who's probably going to put any limits on this for you is you. And if you relate to what I said at the beginning of this video, if you are wiped out halfway through the day, two thirds of the day, if you feel like an NPC or a zombie or some other just kind of brainless creature who can't think or make decisions for themselves, I don't blame you one bit. Like, I, I hope none of this sounds like a guilt trip or judgy or anything like that. I've spent most of my life being addicted to video games, quite frankly. And no matter how hard I've tried, when they're in my life, I will lose the battle. I, I will. I will go back to them again and again and again. The only way I've been able to really enjoy the other elements of my life, not to mention do things like have a YouTube channel, is by getting rid of them. Or at least putting very, very strict boundaries on them. The companies who make these products, whether we're talking about the phones themselves, the apps, the, the whatever, they don't care about you, right? They're not going to set limits for you. They're not going to say, hey, we've made way too much money off you today. It's time for you to go outside and take a walk, friend. No, they will let you ruin their, they will let you ruin your life in order to profit off of you. They're corporations. They're for profit. That's what they do. The only person who can really arrange your ecosystem, the way you need it to be set up is you. I hope that I have given you some tools to help you do that today. It will not change the direction that the world is heading in, but it might change things for you personally. And that's still worthwhile. As always, if anything I said today did not make sense or was kind of a, an incomplete explanation, please let me know in the comments and I will either try to elaborate in response or if a lot of people ask the same question, I'll make another video and we will keep working on this until we make some headway for you. I hope this was helpful. Take care.